What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I am so excited because we have about 7,000 new things to try out. Okay, maybe not 7,000, but I have a full full face of newness to try out. I am so excited. We have both high-end and drugstore in today's video too. So a good mix mosh of products and things that I am just so excited to try out. So I'm gonna keep this intro short and sweet. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button so you be notified of all my future uploads. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, up first, this is probably gonna be the oldest product that we're gonna try. Everything else is like literally brand spanking new, like just came out this week when I'm filming it. These products have been out for a few months. I wanna say they launched like three or four months ago. It's the new KVD Beauty Foundation. I have not gotten a chance to try this yet. I just got it as well as the primer. This is their pore refining primer. So I figured we could give these a try as our base and then everything else is like I said brand spanking new it just came out but this is still newer it's the good apple full coverage serum foundation i remember when the original good apple foundation came out that was like in a pan it was like a cream foundation went crazy viral for being super full coverage and i believe this one is supposed to be the same so we're gonna see i figured might as well start with like the corresponding primer so again this is the kvd pore refining primer i love pore refining primers so let's see how this one compares just gonna apply it right in this area, which is where I have enlarged pores and texture. Ooh, it feels cooling, like a nice hydrating feeling. So I like that because sometimes pore filling primers can be very almost mattifying and drying feeling to the face. This one, you're not gonna get that at all. Feels like a gel kind of cooling. And I do feel like it blurred out my skin right there. So I like that. Okay, starting off on a good foot. Now let's try this foundation. And I just realized that I don't have a dampened beauty sponge as always. So give me a second, let me go grab one. Who else literally always sits down and then realizes that their beauty sponge is not damp? It happens to me at least once per week, but we're back. All right, let's just give this a go. I have this in shade medium 48. Hopefully it works. Maybe I'll shake it a little bit. I don't know. It says it's a serum foundation, which is interesting because normally serum foundations are not full coverage. They're normally a bit lighter, but I'm just gonna squeeze some onto my sponge, that is one pump. And let's apply to this side of the face. Okay, she's definitely giving coverage. I do remember with the original Good Apple, I liked it, but it was definitely kind of thick, if I remember correctly. Like, it certainly looked like you were wearing foundation. So this one, maybe, will be like a lightened sort of version of that. It's definitely giving a matte finish. There's no shine or anything to it. I feel like that covered up my redness really well. You guys can obviously see side to side. It looks quite good. Okay, interestingly enough, I just got up the product page. It claims natural finish. I see this more so as a matte finish. Natural finish is my personal favorite like finish as far as foundation goes. I think this one is a bit more mattifying than most natural finishes, but just did wanna clarify that because that is the finish that it claims. Definitely gives a great coverage though. I do like that and definitely feels lighter than the original KVD Good Apple that was like the balm sort of cream compact foundation that one definitely i think felt thicker and looked thicker on the skin this one doesn't look as thick as that although it's still giving a really good coverage so i do like that there's something about the finish though that i'm not personally like obsessed with i do feel it looks a little dry on my skin and that's why i think it's more of like a mattifying finish like i feel like it does make my skin look a little bit dry so i don't dislike it but i don't know that it's gonna be like a holy grail for me i'm gonna keep a look on it throughout the day check the description box where i list all the products i will list an updated wear test for this because i'm filming this early in the day just after one o'clock right now so i will wear it for like at least eight to nine hours and then update the description box i just feel like it looks a little dry on my skin so i'm nervous that after quite a few hours what it's gonna look like is it gonna like cling to my dry patches and kind of emphasize them i don't know but i would say that i do prefer this to the original good apple um cream foundation i think it looks lighter on the skin which i like moving right along we have new huda beauty so she came out with color correctors for the under eyes so this is the faux filter color corrector i have the shade pink pomelo and I believe this is the lightest shade in the color corrector. So I'm gonna go in on my under eyes with this nice salmon-y sort of undertone. I'm gonna just blend that in. I'm not a huge color corrector person. They're not, it's not a product that I like always consistently use, but they definitely can make a difference and can allow you to use less concealer if you're going in like neutralizing those under eye circles first. And also if you struggle with like severe under eye darkness, it's definitely something that can help. This one looks pretty good. I do feel like it neutralized any like purple or blue undertones underneath my eyes. So I do like that. Now I'm gonna go in with the faux filter concealer from Huda and put it on top of this to see how they work together. Cause obviously I'm assuming they're meant to be kind of used with one another. So I wanna use the same concealer. So I have this one in shade 
3.1B. I'm gonna put this now on my under eyes and blend it out. Okay, they seem to be layering good with one another, which is important because that's always like my worry, I think with under eye correctors is once you start adding a lot of products to your under eye, it can get cakey really quickly. These do seem to be layering fine with one another though. All right, and that is how it looks. I do feel like my under eyes look good covered. So if you're somebody that likes to use correctors as part of your routine, I do feel like these two do work well together and give a good finish to the under eyes without feeling like there's too much product sitting underneath your eyes. Okay, up next, I'm excited. Tarte came out with a man eater silk stick. I have the shade Sundown. So this immediately reminded me of the Rare Beauty bronzer stick. I love that product. It is so beautiful. And I do really like the Tarte Breezy Cream bronzer. So I was like, okay, I could like the stick because I like the stick formula. It's just like easy to place on your face. So let's go in and see. I just kind of put it around where I normally would use it. The shade looks good because it's very neutral. Like it's not super warm and it's not super cool. So it can kind of be used for both. They did send it over with this brush. So I'm going to try it with this brush, but I feel like, I don't know, it's like angled. I don't know that I'm going to like it, like this brush specifically, but let's see. If not, I'll just grab my normal contour brush. Okay, I mean, it blends it out fine. I like my normal brushes and this like, the angle of this is throwing me off for some reason, so. Hang on one sec. Okay, got my normal little rounded brush and let's blend so we can give it a full review. Sometimes you just have like your own tools that you know work well for you and your products and I like to stick with them. Okay, it does blend out really nicely, which is that's like the main thing that I really love about the Rare Beauty one too is it blends like butter and this one is blending out very nicely as well. So definitely quite similar, I would say. And I feel like it helped to kind of contour out my face, but also kind of give me a little bit of a bronzy glow back into my skin. So I do like it. Okay, up next, we have new cream blushes from ColourPop. So I have a few different shades. These are matte cream blushes too, which is interesting. So I have Angel Energy, which I thought this one was really pretty. It's like a pretty pink. I have Whole Nude, which is also another pink. This one's more like purpley pink, this one's more salmon-y pink. And then we have a little bit darker in Cherry Blossom. I think I'm gonna try these two because they're like the most different so we can at least try two. So we have Whole Mood and Cherry Blossom. Let's use Cherry Blossom first. I'm gonna put that on this side. Ooh, she is pretty. I believe these are $10 too, so they're affordable, which is great. Oh, this shade is stunning. And I'm not like, always a matte girly. Like if I'm gonna choose between a matte finish or a glowy finish, a lot of times I will go for glowy finish, but this is pretty. I love this shade, 10 out of 10. Finish is really nice. It's matte, but it's not drying. I like this. Very, very pretty. All right, let me clean off my brush and let's try the other shades so I can show you guys. And there's a lot of different shades in these, so not just the ones that I have. They came in quite a few different shades, plethora of options for you guys. So this, again, is Whole Mood. I'm gonna go in on this side. Oh my goodness. Okay, wait. I thought I was gonna like this one the best. I like this one. This one reminds me of Papaya from ColourPop, which you guys know is my favorite of like their powder um, blushes. Oh, this is pretty. It looks like brighter, I feel like, on the skin than it does in the pan. They look quite similar too, honestly, once they're on the actual skin, but this one, this is my jam. Whole mood. I love this. It's a little bit brighter than Cherry Blossom, and I feel like this is such a summery, fun vibe. I love that. Woo! Okay, this is gonna be a new go-to for me. I already know it. I'm gonna put a little bit on this side just so it doesn't look like we're wearing two different blushes, even though we are. Um, oh my gosh, love, so pretty. Okay, up next we have a new liquid highlight that I really wanna try. So this is the Lottie London Cheeky Glow. They came out with these little liquid highlighter wands. I have this in the shade Champagne Drip. Squeeze some out from the top. This is always like the most satisfying part. And then I'm gonna just top it on my cheeks. The little sponge tip. You know what, I'll do one side at a time in case it's fast drying. I'm just gonna tap it out with my finger. Ooh, this is pretty. It's definitely natural. Like it's not gonna give you blinding glow, just like a more subtle glow to your cheeks, which I don't mind that. Y'all know I love to glow, but there's a time and a place for some subtle glow too. And I know not everyone wants like this big blinding highlight. So this is pretty, it's just not, like I would say the Charlotte Tilbury um, highlighter wands, which obviously these I think are supposed to be like a dupe basically for them, like the component and everything, packaging, super similar. They're more blinding highlight than this is. This is gonna be very natural glow. So basically it depends what you're looking for. I'm gonna put a little down the nose too. So if you want something super, super blinding, not gonna be for you, but if you just want something that's more natural, they do have a pretty finish to give you that kind of like blow from within natural vibe. Okay, I just went ahead and zoomed you guys in before we go in on our eyes. Now we have some new brow products from Miss Selena. We actually have a bunch of new eye products. So she dropped new brow products, some eyeliners and some eyeshadow sticks. So we're gonna test all of them. This is the new brow pencil. So this is the Brow Harmony Precision 
brow pencil looks like this little spoolie on one side tiny precise brow pencil on the other i have this one in shade rich taupe so let's just go in i'm gonna spoolie my brows in place and the shape of this is a little bit different it's kind of like a little like minus sign almost the shape it's not like super rounded like other brow pencils are so interested to see how that kind of works but it is nice and small still Ooh, okay pigment which is good i was nervous the shade was going to be too light but it's not i'm just going to draw a little baseline first going to blend that with the spoolie i'm basically going to do exactly how i do my brows but just use this product to do it so that's typically what i do i'll do like a baseline at the bottom blend it out then go in with like a clear brow gel so i'm going to just use their clear brow gel and run that through my brows kind of fluff them up and add texture let that dry for a second okay now that it's dry i'm gonna go back in with the brow pencil and i'm gonna just draw in little brow strokes going upwards oh yeah this is good i like this brow pencil a lot actually it's very pigmented so you do not have to press hard to like get any product and i'm gonna just spoolie to blend okay yeah i actually really really like this like i feel like brow pencils aren't something that typically you get super excited over most of them are pretty much the same this one i feel like i can like literally tell a difference because it is creamy and very pigmented a lot of times I'm definitely pressing a lot harder on my brows to like try and get the pigment out. I actually really, really like this. And I think it looks really nice on my brows. So this is really good. I like it a lot. And honestly, I don't think this brow gel is new from them. I believe it was my first time using it. I think the brow gel is really good too. So I'm not 100% sure if, I don't think that's a new product, but brow pencil and brow gel are quite good. I like them. Okay, now let's talk about the eyeshadow sticks. So honestly, eyeshadow sticks are something that I used to never really like. I was just always a powder eyeshadow girl, but honestly, in the past couple of years, I've definitely worn a lot less eyeshadow. Like when I'm doing my videos for you guys, obviously I'm doing my eyeshadow and showing you guys. And if I'm doing a full glam look, I'm definitely gonna do eyeshadow, but on a daily basis, a lot of times I skip it, but it is nice to just have a little pen like this where you can just real quick five seconds throw some color on your lid so i have grown to like them a lot more in the past year or so so i have six different shades here i'm gonna go ahead and swatch them for you and then we can pick some to try on the eyes so these are the all of the above weightless eyeshadow sticks the first one i have is in the shade integrity oh that is pretty i like that very like foiled champagne -y golds then we have well-being right there also very pretty this one more of like a pinky light undertone we have growth which is more of a brown bronzy shade contentment these names are really cute this one more of like almost a rose gold i would say and if you see they all have like a very pretty foiled sort of formula which is pretty adventure it's like a true brown and then last but not least we have compassion which is more of like a purpley undertoned brown so those are all of the different shades i'm going to just use a couple so i'm going to start with growth and i'm going to put that on the outer part of the lid we will see how these blend i'm just going to kind of plop that on there then i'm just going to go in with a brush and kind of like buff it out that can be the difficult thing with some of these shadows is that they don't blend that easily and they're really just meant for like one color wash around the lid but this one is blending out so i don't mind that i'm going to add contentment over here too and blend yeah these actually blend out really nicely which is good they're creamy so i like that now let's use integrity in the middle this is like the pretty champagne sort of color and put that there oh see i just like got a glove there because they are creamy you don't want to press too hard i pressed it a little too hard girl boss a little too close to the sun <laughs> i'm gonna just blend that and then let's do well-being which is the more pink in the center here oh this one's pretty this one to just like highlight your inner corner i love because it's light and bright and like foiled and looks really really pretty I'm gonna put a little bit beneath my brow bone too actually to highlight there so to be honest when i use these i would probably just use one wash of color across the lid but you can definitely do like how i'm doing right now and use a few of them and blend them as you would with like a typical powder sort of eyeshadow because they do blend so i do definitely like these they're quick they're easy to use and they look pretty now she did come out with new coal liners too i think i'm gonna use the brown so this one is in the shade this is the perfect stroke longwear gel eyeliner in the shade true brown and i'm gonna go and apply this to my upper lash line and i'm gonna flick it out to create a little wing a little diffused wing moment very pretty okay now let's see if it works in the waterline not all liners really work well in the waterline to be completely honest so let's see okay it is showing up in there had to like work it in there a little bit for a second but it is showing up i think it's probably better used on the lid or lower lash line like how i use it like on your actual skin rather than in the waterline but after a few passes it will show up on the waterline too if that's where you prefer to apply your eyeliner okay up next for mascara we have new huda beauty now this is the one coat 
Wow, so I'm gonna hold it to it. I'm just gonna do one coat on each eye of this. This is extra volumizing and lifting mascara. And like these before and afters look pretty dang dramatic. So let's see if it's actually one coat, I'd be very happy. Oh, so on the back it says one brush, two sides. So you basically use the one side to fully coat and then the other side to like run it through. Interesting, all right. This is what it looks like and this is what the brush looks like. Okay, yeah, I see the difference in the sides now. So this side is how you wanna apply it and then this side is what you're gonna use once you go and kind of brush through. So let me get a good coating on there, get the excess off. Let's try it. I'm gonna coat it on with the one side. Okay, yeah, this did actually really coat my lashes pretty good. And then I'm gonna flip it to the other side and use that to disperse through. Okay, honestly, it's true, that is one coat. Like, I would not need to go in with any more. It picked my lashes up. It's definitely a volumizing mascara. I personally love like long lengthening mascaras, but this one with one coat, I feel like gave me good volume where I would not need to go in with any more, but it did also give me length and lift. So I like that. Let me go in on the other eye. So I'm gonna get a new coat obviously for the other eye, but this would definitely help save time so that you don't, like if you're one of those people that like layers on your mascara for five minutes by doing a bunch of coats, this could be really helpful to you. Cause I feel like the brush really helps to coat a lot of mascara on the lashes. And then you can go through and kind of comb it through to make sure you don't get it like super clumpy and one coat is like actually all that you need so i do like that okay now for the face i'm so excited wet and wild came out with a new collab with alice in wonderland and these immediately caught my eye these little face palettes so they came out with like a bronzer palette a blush palette and a highlight palette they're all quite large too so let me take the packaging off and open these up. Okay, so this is the bronzer one, really pretty. So we kind of have like highlighty colors in the center and then like little bronzers on either side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swirl a brush in it like, like that, tap off the excess. And then let's just go in with this. You can obviously like keep them separate if you want. I just did a little swirly cue. And this is actually very pretty. Gives a pretty little glow. I like that. Okay, now let's try out the blush. Obviously we still have the cream blush on, but I always like to try as many products as possible. So this is the Talk to the Flowers blush palette. So it's essentially gonna be the same thing where you have like two little highlighty shades and then two more matte shades. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Give it a swirl, tap and apply. Ooh, definitely glowy finish, but I actually love that. Very, very pretty. It gives a pretty glow to the cheeks because remember, the blush that we used was matte, so this one adds like a pretty glow to it. I like that. Okay, now for the highlight. This one I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know, like this blue could look a little crazy, but we're gonna give it a go as always and just apply it on. Oh, okay. More like bluish undertone than I would typically like, but looks really pretty. Obviously I could have just used like this one or these two. The blue takes over a little bit, but it's actually still really pretty. If there's one thing Wet n Wild always does right, it's their highlights. Like they are always beautiful. I actually really like these face palettes. Sometimes like Wet n Wild's classic products that is just like in their regular products line, I love them. Like I think they make the best highlights. I love the Incognito Concealer, the Tinted Hydrator, like a lot of their staple products. But then a lot of times when they do these collections, I feel like they're not as good as their staple products, but these face palettes I think are really, really nice. So I do like those. I'm gonna add a little to the nose. Pretty, definitely. And I think these all worked really nice. Now we do have some lippies in this collection too that I wanna try. So the first one, this is cool. This is the This Way Lip and Cheek Color. So you can use this on both your lips and your cheeks. I'm gonna go in on my lips with it. It's kind of like a light orange almost. Feels like a liquid lipstick going on, although it has a like shiny sort of finish to it, which is actually quite pretty and does not feel like super drying. I like that. And then last but not least, they also have a lip gloss. This is just the Alice in Wonderland lip gloss. This is in the shade we sing too. It looks really beautiful. It's like a light pinky peach. I'm gonna go on top. Ooh, it has an interesting smell. I think it's supposed to be like citrusy. I don't know that I love the smell, to be honest. <laughs> that it gives a little juicy, glossy glow to the lips. And I feel like these two do pair well together. I feel like the smell on this is just, it's a personal thing for me, but I don't love the citrusy smell. I don't know. It's a little off, I feel. But these two together on the lips, I do think look really, really pretty. So that is everything, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will link all of the new stuff that we tried out down below. I love the finished look that we were able to create. I feel like it's really pretty. And interestingly enough, as we've gone throughout this tutorial, because I have been filming for about almost two hours now, the foundation on my face now, now I feel like looks less drying than it did when I first applied it. So that's interesting. I'm definitely gonna keep a watch on the foundation. So like I said, check the description box. But I feel like when I first applied it, I felt that it looked dry and now I feel like it doesn't. So maybe it's just gonna be one of those foundations that wears better as the day goes on. So again, I'll keep a watch on it all day and update the description box with a wear test. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you right soon in my next video. Bye.